What up, nerds? Welcome back. My name is Nate in the Wild. Thank you so much for being here again. Today, we're going to talk about rules. Photography is full of them. There's the rule of thirds. There's the exposure triangle. People will tell you that there is a best aperture for portraits and a best shutter speed for landscapes. There are so many rules, but there's also so many rules that nobody will tell you. I personally didn't have a photography mentor. I'm pretty much entirely self-taught from watching YouTube videos, reading blogs, etc., and a lot of trial and error. And unfortunately, for almost every single one of these rules, I learned them the hard way. <laughs> this has been the worst project of my entire life. So I figured, let's not make them unspoken rules. Let's spoken them today for this video. Let's get into it. So the first one, the most important one, I think we've all seen this before, but it's really just double check your tripod connection. It's so easy to put your camera on and it feels like your Arca plate is in there and you click it and you walk away and then your camera falls off. I've probably seen this happen in person 10 separate times. It seems so silly, but it's important. Just get down there and look at it. Just like visually look and see that your base plate is in there when you push this in. I also will set this uh, tight enough that it feels easy with nothing in there and it takes a little effort while the base plate's in there so I know there's a tactile feedback. But seriously, just like get down there and look at it and make sure that your base plate is seated before you walk away. The next one, it goes hand in hand with that, is I always just leave the strap around my neck. In pretty much every scenario, when I'm picking up my tripod and carrying it, even if I've visually inspected and made sure that's clicked in there, I will still do it. I've seen it where it feels like this is clicked in and it's actually just kind of wedged in weirdly and then somebody picks up their tripod and their camera goes flying. Uh, I always leave the strap on, even while hiking. In the capture clip, no matter what, the strap is around my neck pretty much at all times, unless I'm doing a long time lapse and then I know that it's just sitting there motionless. Now, perhaps the most important lesson I've learned over the course of my career is how to save time in the editing room and nothing makes that easier than motion array. The absolute easiest way to take a project to the next level is by adding professional looking motion graphics and overlays, but those can take hours when creating from scratch. Motion array is an online marketplace with an incredible amount of assets from video templates, stock footage, sound effects, and graphic illustrations, plus over 40 powerful plugins that are included in every plan to upgrade your workflow. No matter which editor you use, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, Premiere Rush, DaVinci Resolve, and even Final Cut Pro or Avon. You've heard me talk about it in the past, but Motion Array now is better than ever before. They have over 10,000 graphics, vectors, icons, patterns, and much more. Each graphic is handmade by award-winning designers and completely customizable so that you can make it your own. And the best part is that you can use these curated graphics anywhere. Corporate videos, Instagram posts, and even client work. And perhaps the best part of all, you can try Motion Array completely for free. There's no payment required. Sign up for a free trial today and get hundreds of free assets to try out immediately with zero commitment. Plus, you get $50 off your annual subscription if you just click the link in my description below. Head to motionarray.com today and get on the right track to taking your content from good to amazing. Okay, so the next one is super important. I'm gonna follow my own advice and put the next strap around as I take the camera off the tripod. I'm not joking when I say I've learned these lessons the hard way. Uh, another one that I've learned the hard way, let's put the lens cap somewhere you don't lose it. That wasn't an official tip, but just put your lens cap somewhere where you're not gonna lose it. Uh, the most important one for me is I always tilt the camera up when screwing filters on and off. It's so much easier. You get gravity to help you. Gravity just pulls the threads on and then helps you keep everything straight. But I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody try to screw a filter on to the front of their lens while it's clicked onto their tripod and they start twisting and they think that the threads have caught and they let go to give it a good little twist like that and then they're filter either goes flying or rolls down a hill or it just hits the ground and breaks. It's so avoidable. You don't even have to take your camera off the tripod. You can just point it up, screw your filter on, and then recompose. I know that it seems annoying if you have your composition right to move your camera and screw the filter on, but uh, dropping a $200 filter and breaking it is significantly more annoying than having to compose a shot twice. And on that note of filters, 
On the front right now, I just have a cheap UV filter. UV filters kind of do nothing for digital photography, but just any clear filter, it costs $25. A good one can cost like $30 to $50, and that is way cheaper than replacing the front element of your lens. This is another thing that I have done and I've seen done. I've broken this front filter and it cost me another $25 to replace it. I've seen people without that break the front element of their lens and it costs $700 to replace. It is such an affordable peace of mind to just keep a clear filter on the front of your lens to protect it from all sorts of damage. And they're, they weigh nothing, it adds nothing to your bag, but it saves you two weeks of having your lens gone while it's in for repairs and several hundred dollars in damages. The next tip is to always zip your backpack shut when you're done using it. Sounds obvious, but once again, lesson I've learned the hard way. Uh, I do a lot of ski filming, ski photography, etc. in the winter, and I can't tell you the number of times I take my backpack off, I open it, I get my camera out, and I'll just kind of like flap it shut and I go to get my shot. The skier goes by and I get a huge wave of snow that completely fills the inside of my backpack. So now my habit is I always zip it shut anytime it's on the ground, even if you're not shooting ski photography. If it's just sitting there and you're going to walk away for a second or you just pull your lens out, just zip it shut. It takes you two seconds out of your day and it prevents you from unavoidable errors. And on that same note, always make sure it's zipped up before you pick it up. Another thing I've seen happen, People pull a lens out, they put it on their camera, they do their little thing, they forget their backpacks open, they pick it up to walk away and everything goes flying. Very expensive mistakes. Probably the first lesson that I learned the hard way in photography, before I actually was doing it professionally, I was still a hobbyist, still had a day job. Don't just leave your camera sitting on the tripod and walk away. I had one of the most beautiful time lapses of my life and after probably 40 or 50 photos, a huge gust of wind came, blew my tripod over and broke my camera. So now I have a beautiful one and a half second video that could have been the best time lapse of my life. Instead, I went home with no time lapse and a destroyed camera. So please, if you are using your camera in any way on a tripod, just make sure it's stable. I just, I don't leave my tripod fully set up and walk away from it anymore while I'm outside. This next one seems very obvious, but it's like the number one mistake that photographers make when they're going out to shoot. I always have a spare SD card or two in my backpack. And I don't mean that I always remember to put an SD card in there because that sort of defeats the purpose. You're obviously going to forget eventually. I have a dedicated SD card that lives in a tiny pocket in my backpack at all times, no matter what. So that if I forget to put a card in the camera, or forget to bring my little pouch of memory cards. I still have a memory card. It's just one backup one. It exists for no reason other than being in my backpack just in case. And the same thing with a battery. This one takes a little more thought because you have to remember to keep it charged, but I always make sure there is just one battery in my backpack no matter what. Another important tip is to turn your camera off when changing lenses. It doesn't seem like it should matter maybe, but uh, when the camera is powered on, the sensor actually creates a little bit of an electromagnetic field and it will physically pull dust onto it. Changing lenses is always kind of the scariest part when you're outdoors because there's a huge risk for getting dust on your sensor, which isn't the end of the world, but it's just kind of annoying in post. Um, but I will always, while changing lenses, point the camera down so dust doesn't fall into the sensor. So the camera is always pointed down but then also make sure that it's off. If the camera's on, it'll pull dust onto the sensor. This makes your life a whole lot worse. And then, oh, look at that. I did the thing. That's why the straps are around your neck. And that's it. Those are the tips I got for you today. Thank you all so much for watching. If there's any I forgot, please drop them into the comments below. This is supposed to be a learning experience for everyone. These are, for some reason, a lot of kind of unspoken tips and tricks, and people learn the lessons the hard way. So if you've learned any lessons the hard way, please let us all know. Together, we can all just be better, happier photographers with less broken equipment. Until next time, stay nerdy.